Joining me now is Aliko Dangote, founder, president, and CEO of the Dangote Group. Aliko, it's so great to see you. It's been a very long time. Thank you so much for being with us on this program. Let me start by asking you, how has the Dangote Group navigated the pandemic? Well, thank you very much, uh, Zen. Well, the Dangote Group really navigated very, very well because what we did was actually, you know, first of all, the safety of our people is very, very key and very important to us. So we made sure that everything was done perfectly well, you know, during the pandemic to make sure the safety of our people is uh, put in place. And, uh, you know, we did quite a lot of innovations where, you know, we made sure that, uh, you know, uh, we focus on our own supply chain. And then apart from focusing on a supply chain, we uh, made sure that, uh, you know, we cut cost and uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, everything turns out to be okay. So at the end of the day, uh, the result was that we did much, much better. In the cement business, we did 37% uh, more than 2019 in terms of profit after tax. And then we did uh, about 35% in the food business uh you know uh after tax our profit after tax so when you look at this really you know we thought we we're actually going to go into the negative during the 20 uh 20 results but we came out much much better because of all the innovation we put in place what kind of innovation could you could you give us an example of maybe one of the things you did well, one of the things that we did actually, you know, was to make sure that we, uh, uh, you know, the supply chain was done perfectly so that there won't be any disruptions. Because if you remember, there are quite a lot of lockdowns all over the place. So we needed to uh, make sure there's no disruption in our supplies. And then, uh, you know, the uh, market also went up, uh, you know, the demand of our goods, uh, you know, went up because we were able to supply our goods right on time and also to satisfy the customers. So with that, really, uh, it gave us a lot of, uh, you know, headroom to make sure that we did a lot of volume and that actually translated into making more money. What kind of investments are you making in Africa right now? Well, right now in Africa, we're making quite a lot of investments, uh, you know, totaling about $19 billion. Uh, we are doing the single largest refinery uh, of 650,000 barrels per day, which is almost one third of Nigeria's production. And uh, we'll produce all sorts of, uh, you know, keros I mean, kerosene, aviation fuel, all the, uh, you know, this. And so when we, uh, finish, we'll be able to supply Nigeria fully and we'll be able to also supply the other uh, countries in sub-Saharan uh, Africa with their petroleum, uh, you know, demands. But why are we doing that? We're doing that because if you look at it, the sub-Saharan African countries, all of them, they import what they consume in terms of petroleum products. And that's why we believe that it is totally necessary you know, for us to make sure that, yes, we actually take out this burden of importation of petroleum products by now putting up this big size of, uh, you know, uh, refinery. Uh, then we have the other one, which is the petrochemical. We are doing uh, polypropylene and polyethylene to the tune of 1.35 million metric tons, which will satisfy all the demands of the sub-Saharan uh, African, uh, you know, countries in terms of polypropylene, polyethylene. The third one we're doing is the uh, fertilizer, which is urea, 3 million tons. It's going to be the uh, only urea plant in the sub-Saharan uh, African countries, which will be able to supply to all the other major uh, consumers within the uh, African, uh, within the sub-Saharan African continent. So that can actually help to boost our agriculture and uh, we don't really have delays in terms of supply of our own uh, urea demands. Uh, the fourth one is the port. We had to build a mini port, which can take about four ships mm -hmm. to be able to bring right. in uh, uh, goods and also be able to transfer goods out for exports. Well, where are you intending to export uh, the fertilizer? Well, 
the export of uh, fertilizer, you believe that our first shipment, which will happen by end of June, beginning of July, is going to uh, Louisiana in the United States of America. But majority of our export is going to be in, uh, you know, is going to be uh, in uh, Brazil. Brazil will take majority of our supplies. So apart, apart from meeting the domestic demands, we are now going to be uh, able to earn quite a lot of money exporting the goods uh, to the uh, South American countries. Let's focus our conversation a little bit now as well on, on the continent itself, on the intra-African trade. And the really big deal in Africa is the African Free Trade Continental Area Agreement. Could you tell us a little bit about why it's so important and whether you think it will give Africa a real boost? Well, then uh, definitely it is going to give Africa, you know, the AFCTA will actually create the largest free trade uh, area in the world. You have to get that, you know, measured by the number of participating countries because you have 54 countries that will be participating. And also you have a uh, 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 population of 1.3 billion people. So this will actually create quite a lot. And as you know, we have a combined GDP of about 3.4 trillion <clears throat> as of today. The bust will come within the next about five to 10 years. Why now we are going to move from the intra-trade of only 16% to now 52%. Uh, if you look at it, even Asia is 59% and Europe is 68%. So this will actually help in terms of creating a lot of jobs because by 2034, as you know, uh, we will have about 1.1 billion working class, you know, by that period. So I think this will actually help to boost the economy of all the African countries. The smaller countries where they actually don't have their markets, they are now have a market. So that's what we are actually looking at. And just briefly, Al Haji, what do you think the most important thing uh, anyone looking at Africa today from an investment standpoint should understand about the continent? You've talked about the CFTA, um, the potential opportunities that exist. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us as a final thought? I think as a final thought, uh, in Africa, you need to look at first, uh, you know, agriculture. We have 60% uh, of the world's arable land where we can actually, you know, grow a lot of food and, uh, you know, export where majority of other countries, they actually run short, short of land. We have the best climate. We can grow almost anything. So what we are now trying to do is to focus on manufacturing and agriculture. These are our strengths in uh, uh, Africa. So I believe we can do quite a lot by feeding the uh, world, you know, and, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. Apart from that, we will now go into, because you know, a lot of countries in Africa, they have a lot of uh, gas reserves. So when you look at that, it will help us to now do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, 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 you know, polypropylene, polyethylene, all the petrochemicals. So we can be a hub in terms of supplying the world with their LNG, with their, uh, you know, petrochemicals uh, needs. Aliko Dangote, thank you so much. Really great to see you. Great to speak to you, Al Haji. I hope it's in person one day very soon. Thank you. Asante. Thank you very much, Zen. Thank you.